Citizen Science is a tool for chemistry education, using a virtual workshop to engage secondary students in open source drug discovery. My name is Genevieve Fermer and I'm part of the Breaking Good team. I acknowledge that I live and work on unceded Aboriginal lands. Today, I'm on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I pay my respects to those who have cared for and continue to care for country. I'm currently doing a PhD in the Scope Group in the School of Chemistry at the University of Sydney. My PhD focuses on year 11 and 12 chemistry education. And before coming to research, I worked as a science teacher and curriculum coordinator at a school in the Northern Territory. As part of my PhD, I've worked in the Breaking Good team to help bring our citizen science projects into school settings. The team includes Dr. Kimberly Scroggie, Dr. Yela Golumbic, Professor Peter Rutledge, and Associate Professor Alice Motion. Breaking Good is an international citizen science initiative. We have a number of citizen science projects that tackle the issue of medicine accessibility in a few different ways. In our open source drug discovery projects, we work with high school and undergraduate students to design and synthesize medicines in chemistry laboratories. We focus on medicines that aren't available to the patients who need them, either because they don't exist yet or they're too expensive. Our other project, Essential Medicines, is one we started in 2020 when COVID meant that many of our students were studying online. The aim was to devise a project that can involve everyone in chemistry research, not just people who have access to a laboratory. We realized that there was an opportunity to use the power of the internet and public participation in science to gather information about personal and systemic experiences in getting access to important medicines. The project name is inspired by our focus on the list of medicines that the World Health Organization has named as priority medicines. These are medicines that should be available to all people at all times in sufficient quantities. It is a list of 400 plus drugs and treatments and it's called the Essential Medicines List. In our project, we invite people from anywhere in the world to help us understand some of the complex social, political and economic factors that influence medicine accessibility. While many citizen science projects focus on collecting new data, we believe that much of the information we're looking for is already out there. The Essential Medicines Project aims to bring this information together into one place so that it can be used to better understand medicine accessibility across the world. The project centers around three challenges, but today I'll focus on just one, the circle of life. In this challenge, participants research the life cycle of a medicine from its discovery to its development, registration, price changes, manufacturing changes, and anything else they can find. Because we know it's these kinds of life events for medicines that can impact their accessibility. The challenge enables them to choose a particular aspect of medicine accessibility that interests them. And this flexibility meant that it had the potential to fit into a school setting. It also enabled us to unite the social contexts that are relevant to the lives of students with scientific concepts and skills that are present in the school curriculum. It was a way we could involve young people in authentic science research in their regular classroom environments. As a team, we developed a framework to build a school workshop around our citizen science project, and that's what I'd like to outline today. We conceptualize this framework as a sandwich around the citizen science. The pieces of bread are the introduction and the conclusion. And the citizen science is the filling of your choice in the middle. In the introduction, it's important to show participants how the citizen science is relevant to them and to provide them with the skills and knowledge they'll need to participate meaningfully in the project. In essential medicines, we focus on self-efficacy, making sure that participants believe in their personal capacity to engage in the content and skills we're going to present to them. In the conclusion, our goals are to consolidate the learning and to ensure participants leave the workshop feeling positive. This neatly divides our workshop into three sessions. First, an introduction where concepts and processes are linked to the social context of participants and examples are used to engage and motivate them and prime self-efficacy. In the second session, participants learn about the scientific methods that are relevant to the citizen science project and then they participate in the project. And finally, science communication is used as a tool to consolidate student learning. In the next layers of the framework, we place our model in a school setting. When working with young people, it's so important to identify the right level. The curriculum can guide you to find that level and help you to meet the needs of schools. We've used curriculum in our project to guide the development of each layer of our sandwich. In the introduction and conclusion, it helped us to focus on content and skills that was relevant to the students. For the citizen science filling, curriculum alignment can be tough and we had to be quite flexible and creative with the shape of our project to ensure it met the needs of both the schools and our project.
How do we make sure the workshop is aligned with the curriculum? To do this, we need to understand the curriculum. So the Australian science curriculum is split into three interwoven strands. The science understanding covers the biology and chemistry, physics, earth and space science concepts. The science inquiry skills is all about the scientific process and students learn to ask questions, design investigations, analyze data and present results. And the science is a human endeavor or she is all about helping students to understand the nature of science and about the interactions between science and society and how those systems influence each other on individual and systematic levels. Now, if we map bits of the year nine and 10 curriculum to our citizen science sandwich, you can see that science as a human endeavor links nicely with the introduction section because we can consider how the values and needs of society can influence scientific research. The citizen science section maps well to the science inquiry skills, and you can actually pick those that are relevant to your chosen scientific method. For us, this was analyzing information from secondary sources and evaluating the approaches that people use to solve problems. And for the science communication in the final session, that's actually explicitly stated as a skill in the science inquiry skills section of the curriculum. So in my view, the science is a human endeavor and the science inquiry skills, once you're familiar with them, are quite easy to map to citizen science projects. And it's the science understanding part that can be quite challenging. So for our project to align the science understanding, uh, we found a year 10 chemistry outcome that provided an ideal context for our project. Chemical reactions are used to produce a range of products, including pharmaceuticals. Now by itself, that curriculum point doesn't give you much guidance, but as a teacher, the way I like to look at the curriculum is through a learning progressions lens. I always wanna understand where the students have been and where they're going. We found that the chemistry understanding we were going to require in the workshop was quite beyond what they traditionally learn at school. But medicines work by interacting with biological systems in the body, with cells and with proteins. And so we looked to the biology curriculum. You can see from my initial map here that the curriculum can look pretty complicated. But what I was looking for specifically was medicines on the essential medicines list that interact with one or more of the biological systems that I knew students would be familiar with. So for the bottom end of the learning progression, we looked to the year seven, eight and nine curriculum. We saw that students should understand some of the structures of bacterial cells like their cell walls. Now, penicillin based antibiotics actually work by preventing bacteria from making these cell walls and that's how they kill the bacteria. So we picked one of these antibiotics off, off the essential medicines list for students to explore. And then we made sure we included enough information that they'd be able to draw links between the bacterial cells they knew about and the antibiotics we were presenting to them. And for the top of the learning progression, we looked to year 10, 11 and 12, and we found that students were soon going to need to understand DNA. So we included a medicine that interrupts viral DNA production, a medicine called PrEP, which is used to protect people from HIV infection. And we pitched the information in such a way that it might help the students to start to piece together some of those ideas about DNA that they'd have to tackle a little bit later on in their school careers. With all of this in mind, we drew out a skeleton of our workshop. In session one, we drew student attention to the social, cultural, economic, and political influences of medicine development, marketing, and accessibility. We developed students' awareness around the process of drug discovery and design, and we specifically included an activity to address that issue of self-efficacy to help them access some of the things we thought they might find difficult in our workshop. In session two, we gave the students a mini masterclass in advanced online research tools. And then we set them three free to participate in our citizen science challenge where they researched the life cycle and accessibility of one essential medicine that they chose from our shortlist. And in session three, students got a science communication masterclass and then they used their new tools to communicate their findings from their investigation in a creative way. And we developed three chemistry learning outcomes. We wanted students to see medicines as collections of atoms and molecules, as well as seeing the biological systems that the medicines interact with inside the body as atoms and molecules. We wanted them to recognize and understand and not be scared off by different types of chemical structures. And we wanted them to understand that chemists design medicines. So in school, chemistry is often presented as an explanatory science where they do lots of controlled experiments that aim to understand chemical systems. But medicinal chemistry research is a bit different because what we're trying to do is to design new molecules. And it's important that participants see chemistry in this way if they're going to properly understand and appreciate the scientific developments in our field over time.
In this final section on our workshop design, I'll leave you with two tools we found effective for presenting challenging information to the students. The two parts of our workshop where I felt we needed to be the most careful of were from a chemistry perspective, making sure the students were able to engage with the complex chemical structures we were about to throw at them, and another from the circle of life challenge where they were required to complete quite a complex online investigation. And in order to ensure that these challenges were sort of less intimidating for the students, we utilized the tools of play-based learning and scaffolding. Play-based learning enables students to interact with new concepts in a fun way where they feel like they're free to explore and they're not worried about this idea of a right answer or a wrong answer. And we use this in tackling those chemical structures we were going to show them. On the screen is an example of three of those chemical structures, and they can look quite scary if you're unfamiliar with all of the symbols. And this is true for year nine and 10, they haven't seen anything like this before. We decided it was important to keep them in our workshop though, because this series of molecules frames quite nicely this idea that medicinal chemistry is a design-based subject. The medicine on the far left, artemisinin, it's an anti-malarial medicine, and it's been altered in the pink region by scientists over time. This has produced better outcomes for patients, and we wanted students to be able to see this theme of improvements on the medicines they would investigate throughout the workshop. So we asked them to sketch the molecules in a couple of different ways, and then we worked on making 3D models together. We were really happy with the outcome of this activity, not only because the students weren't scared off, but they continued drawing and engaging with quite complex molecules throughout the day. The next tool we used was scaffolding. Scaffolding supports students to solve problems that are at the periphery of their current abilities. In our circle of life challenge, we're asking students to dig quite deeply into the interactions between science and society. This is a very different type of information to what they're used to digging up in the science classroom. And it's quite an open-ended task and they'd need to use some online research tools that were quite um, advanced. So to support them, we broke down the process into individual steps and we walked them through each of those steps. And we provided them with a worksheet that prompted them to write out their finding at each of the steps. This was good because they could see their progress in real time. And it was a great differentiation tool because it helped students at all levels access the work and gave them opportunities to extend themselves. And from the worksheets we collected at the end, from my teacher perspective, it seemed to work quite well because we had quite a high rate of students getting right through to the end of what was quite a tough investigation. I'm going to share some of the feedback we've received from our participants. This graph represents student answers regarding their favorite part of the workshop. What really struck me was that we had such a range of results where students liked many different parts of the workshop. The medicine stories, molecular structures, and are we essentials activities were all in the introduction section of the workshop. And it was nice to see how many students really enjoyed the citizen science investigation itself. We had a lot of great comments from the students, noting that workshop was fun, informative, engaging and accessible. And one student even said that it was the best science experience they've had in a long time. And that was one of the participants that joined us over Zoom as well. Here, we asked students on a scale of strongly disagree to strongly agree, whether the workshop helped them to understand what chemists do. I'm quite happy with the results here. Many students commented that the workshop helped them become more interested in chemistry because they could see it was relevant to society and everyday life, which I found really interesting and is quite promising for citizen science. What's next for essential medicines? So we wanna work on some formal evaluation of the learning, both in terms of the chemistry understanding, but also in terms of the enjoyment. And we wanna understand whether our workshop motivated participants to consider science as a career as well. We're also working towards some long-term engagement with the schools, um, collaborating in the design of turning the workshop into an integrated science unit that teachers can lead. And hopefully we'll have something exciting to share in that space later this year. In summary, we've conceptualized citizen science workshops as a sandwich where the filling is customizable and special attention is paid to the relevance and providing participants with the skills and knowledge they need to engage meaningfully. For school workshops, we've used the curriculum with a learning progressions lens to help find the right level for the audience, whilst also meeting the needs of a school. And finally, using tools such as play-based learning and scaffolding, we've been able to expose the students to scientific understanding and processes that would normally be quite challenging, and that has helped us to engage students in a level of chemistry that's quite rich and exciting. On behalf of the Breaking Good team, thank you for joining us today.